Welcome everybody. Welcome to the Memphis Public Library's uh, jazz series. My name is Lisa. I'm coming at you from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, and I have to right off the bat thank the Memphis Public Library and the Memphis Library Foundation for promoting uh, live music and independent musicians. And also Sue Schnitzer, who is the coordinator for all of uh, all of this. She does, she works so hard. So thank you so very much, Mrs. Sue. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I've got a hundred years to cover from uh, 1920s to uh, the present day. So here we go. Uh, so, hundred years of jazz. Uh, and I'm going to specifically talk about the Great American Songbook and how that kind of came into being, uh, you know, our standards that we, that we know and we love and they get performed and arranged over and over again. Uh, they're, they're just enduring songs. So uh, let's go back to right before the 20s started. We just got out of World War I uh, and um, jazz was coming up the river. Came up the river from New Orleans and it went into Memphis. It went to St. Louis. It went all the way to Chicago. Uh, there were speakeasies. It was vaudeville. You danced the Charleston. There were flappers around and everything. It was the roaring 20s. Uh, and uh, this song came into being, W.C. Handy. Met a woman in St. Louis who inspired the song, and uh, so this is a this is a great song. It's Bessie Smith's song, uh, Chattanooga sister, Chattanooga sister, Tennessee here. So here's a little St. Louis blues. It's near and dear to my heart because I'm originally from St. Louis. I hate to see that evening sun go down. I see some friends coming in. Yay, thanks you guys, appreciate it. So we are in the 20s. We are solidly in the 20s and uh, this is a song, you know, the, the Great American Songbook was very composer driven. Yes, it was performer dr driven and arranger, but uh, without a song, there wouldn't be a songbook, right? So this is a great songwriter, Mr. Irving Berlin. I know everybody knows him. Blue sky smiling at me Nothing but blue skies do I see Blue birds singing a song Nothing but blue birds all day long Never saw the sun shining so bright Never saw things going so right Noticing the days hurrying by when you're in love, my, my, how they fly Blue days, all of them gone Nothing but blue skies all day long Nothing but blue skies all day long Hey, Susan Harder, thanks. Love that song, too. Great. All of Irving Berlin's songs are just incredible. Oh, my God. Uh, here's another great one from the 20s. Uh, this one was uh, really typifies the Roaring Twenties. 
uh, Paul Whiteman and uh, 18 others that I found recorded this song. Very familiar song. I think you'll know it. Sounds good on the little soprano ukulele. That's what we're starting out with. <laughs> Things will get bigger though. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ain't she sweet? See you walking down the street. Yeah, I ask you very confidentially. Ain't she sweet? Ain't she nice? Look her over once or twice. Well, I ask you very confidentially. Ain't she nice? Just cast an eye in her direction. Oh, me, oh, my. Ain't that perfection? Boo, 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 boo. I repeat. Don't you think it's kind of neat? Now I ask you very confidentially, ain't she sweet? Ask you very confidentially, ain't she sweet? Oh, doesn't, isn't that the happiest music? How can you have a frown on your face with that kind of stuff going on? All right, so uh, that's my tribute to the 20s. Uh, it was uh, kind of fast, but uh, you know, when you got 100 years to cover, you can't dilly-dally around. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thanks for the great comments. I'm seeing them roll by. I appreciate it very much. So uh, we're going into the 30s. This is 1931, and we're starting to see the beginnings of a new era. We're starting to see the big band era. Oh, my God. So uh, even though I'm going to perform this on the soprano ukulele, the big band era must have been something else. I did see a few big bands back in the day. I was lucky enough to see even Count Basie's big band one time, and he was at the end of his life. And it's a wall of sound hitting you. you got five trumpets, four trombones, five saxophones, a rhythm section, a band leader, and singers, and, and maybe lots of singers. Uh, lots, of, lots of stuff going on. Big wall of sound. So uh, this was one of Duke Ellington's early hits. Um, Ivy Anderson was the first vocalist. Later, of course, Louie and Ella and Lady Gaga and even Tony Bennett have recorded this song. But this was one of the first times that somebody did something called scat singing. They heard the horns, uh, you know, doing their thing. And uh, the singers wanted to get in on that too. And I don't blame them because it's fun. Don't mean a thing if you ain't got that swing. Do I, 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 do I? Don't mean a thing, all you gotta do is sing. Do I, 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 do I? It makes no difference if it's sweet or hot. Just give that little rhythm everything you got. Well, it don't mean a thing, all you got. So uh, let's thank the little soprano ukulele. <clears throat> By the way, the Memphis Library has uh, ukuleles for you to borrow. So that's a very, very cool thing that's uh, started around. Uh, the country libraries are starting to let you lend you ukuleles. So uh, it's a really cool thing. So we're done with the little soprano, though. It did a good job. Uh, I'm going to briefly go to piano here and uh, talk about a couple composers, and their last name was Gershwin. They were two brothers, George and Ira. I'm sure a lot of you know of them. What you might not know is, when I lived in Los Angeles, I got to go to Rosemary Clooney's house, and Rosemary Clooney used to live in George Gershwin's old house. And I got to play the piano that was George Gershwin's. Ah! It was really cool. 
So anyway, uh, the Gershwins wrote so many standards, so many things in the American, standbook, uh, American Songbook. This particular song is really a standard for jazz musicians because in the middle of the song, what we call the bridge, is a standard formula of, we call it a 36251 formula. It's used over and over, and jazz musicians talk about it like, oh, hey, the bridge has rhythm changes. And then everybody knows what you mean because the bridge of this song set the standard for that. That's pretty cool. Here's a little I Got Rhythm. songwriters oh my god that was from girl crazy by the way they wrote a lot of songs for the stage this is another song uh, written for the stage a uh, different composer mr. Cole Porter uh, this is most this is the most recorded song in in uh, Cole's uh, repertoire in, in his catalog uh, it was recorded alone for Frank Sinatra recorded at least four times uh, the Four Seasons, Michael Bublé, uh, was originally from a production called Born to Dance. Great, great, great tune. This is 1935. We're still in the 30s. I've got you under my skin. I've got Try to resist when, baby, I know too well. I've got you under my skin. Sorry, I don't have time to do all of these songs in their entirety, even though we love them. We love these songs. Just incredible, incredible music. Uh, here's another song uh, from the 30s. This is 1936. And Mark, I saw you join in there. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, this is a song uh, that was written by Jerome Kern and, and Dorothy Fields. Uh, Sinatra also uh, recorded this, as did uh, Bing Crosby and Peggy Lee uh, and Billie Holiday. But the honor of the first recording went to an incredibly dancing man in swing time. His name was Fred Astaire. Just incredible song. Someday when I'm awfully low and the world is cold, I will feel a glow just thinking of you, just the way you look tonight. Oh, but you're lovely with your smile so warm and your cheeks so soft. There is nothing for me but to love you Just the way you look tonight Oh man, incredible songs. 
if you're missing the ends of these songs, you got to go listen to the guys that recorded them because they're just the arrangements, the vocals, everything, just just stunning. So uh, I mentioned we're in the big band era still, right? This is uh, 1939. We fast forward a little bit. And there was a guy named Billy Strayhorn, and uh, he knew Duke, Duke Ellington pretty well. And uh, the first time he went to Duke's house uh, in New York, Duke gave him directions. And he said, well, man, it's real easy. You just take the A train. have to imagine that I'm sitting in front of a Steinway Grand here instead of my uh, little 61 note keyboard which is the thing that fits by my computer. <laughs> you got a, a lot of imagination you got to use there. <laughs> All right so uh, we're wrapped up the 30s and we are moving forward here. Um, we, we got a time machine going on right? We got, we got a time machine we're going through a hundred years in, in our TARDIS. <laughs> That's, that's pretty cool. All right, and I am uh, getting out uh, what we know as a baritone uh, ukulele, which is, I went from the smallest one to the biggest one. Uh, because I'm a repressed guitarist and I never really learned guitar. However, next week, you are really in for a treat because next week, the next person in the jazz series is a guy named Michael August. Whoa, you guys have to tune in. He is amazing. He plays guitar, he plays ukulele, he plays banjo, he plays harp, harmonica. I, I, he probably plays a bunch of other things that I don't even know about. Uh, he's a Chicago area guy. He is, uh, he's gonna knock your socks off. So please tune in and see Michael August next Friday and you'll, you'll hear a guitarist. Uh, right now you have to deal with a baritone ukulele person, so. <laughs> Anyway, it's all good. So uh, in 1941, we know what happened uh, to the United States. We got into World War II because of Pearl Harbor. Uh, and that happened to be the year that uh, this song was written for a very, very special lady. Her name was Billie Holiday. And she was a singer's singer, a musician's musician. Um, she delayed the phrasing. She really kind of wrote the book on jazz vocal phrasing, influenced so many of us. Uh, if your beat was going like this, a one, a two, and you're supposed to sing on the beat, Billy would sing, you're supposed to sing on the beat. <laughs> she did not sing on the beat. She did her own thing and it just was amazing, amazing, amazing. So uh, this song was written for her, uh, and uh, it's one of my favorites. I hope you can, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you can listen to Billy sing it sometime. I don't know why, but I'm feeling so sad. I long to try something I've never had. Never had no kissing, baby. What we've been missing, lover man. Oh, where can you be? The night is cold, and I'm all so alone. I give my soul just to call you my own. Well, now I got a move. But no one to love me, love 
song and Billy sings it so beautifully okay so that year is 1941 and uh, along with our big band era there were big band singers lots of them uh, and uh, it also gave rise to well actually in the 20s uh, we had the ink spots um, but um, out of the barbershop tradition harmony groups just abounded uh, and a lot of them were related, uh, like this group, a bunch of sisters, called the Andrews Sisters. And uh, they were goodwill ambassadors. I mean, jazz, you know, Americans came up with jazz, and, and when we went off to war, we took jazz along with us in our suitcase, and the world fell in love with it. Uh, so this was, uh, this is a great little Andrews Sisters song. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone but me harmony part. <laughs> Little Anders Sisters, uh, you know, there were so many great vocal groups, the Modern Airs, the Anders Sisters, the Ink Spots, the Mills Brothers, incredible blends, incredible, uh, just, just beautiful, beautiful arrangements. Um, so uh, we are still in the 40s. Um, as you can tell from the lyric of that, to like a marching home, you know, people were wanting the war to be over. We were wanting our boys to come home. Uh, and then suddenly, it happened. And the war was over. And it was 1945. And uh, this song was uh, written by Les Brown and a few other people, uh, Ben Homer and Bud Green. It was a theme song for a lot of people coming home. And it was sung by uh, one of America's darlings, Miss Doris Day. Take a sentimental journey, gonna set my heart at ease. Gonna make a sentimental journey, sentimental journey. Seven, that's the time we leave at seven. Yes, getting those troops back home. So uh, that uh, that song, just just an incredible um, 
incredible feeling. Uh, and then, there, of course, there was a joyous feeling going on in the land. Uh, and this young man, who was very famous for his voice and for his good looks, came out with this song. But what a lot of people didn't know, a lot of people still don't know, is that if you have missed Nat King Cole playing the piano, whoa, you have really missed something. You got to check him out. The man could play the piano. The buzzer took the monkey for a ride in the air. The monkey thought that everything was half a square. The buzzer tried to throw the monkey off his back. The monkey grabbed his neck and said, now listen, Jack. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and do right. Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. Ain't no use in jiving. What's the use of trying? Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. The buzzer told the monkey, you're choking me. Release your hole and I'll set you free. The monkey looked the buzzer right dead in the eyes. And your story is convincing, but it sounds like a lie. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and do right. Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow. Don't forget, check out Nat King Cole and his piano playing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Incredible piano player. I got to meet Natalie when she was here in Nashville. Uh, she stayed at a hotel I was playing at and uh, came into where I was playing a piano bar and sat there and listened to me. And I, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> she was very, very sweet. All right, so uh, let's see, where are we? We... We welcomed our troops home. We straightened up and fly right. Oh, so we had our lovely big band era. And, uh, you know, nothing lasts forever. So uh, along came uh, the war uh, rebuilding years. And, uh, and the U.S. Was, was trying to make a go of it. And people were working and, and trying to get the economy back in track. And um, jazz kind of shrunk down in size a little bit. Uh, we started to go with four and five piece ensembles, little quartets and quintets. And uh, one of the guys that came to the forefront of that genre and who founded a whole genre himself, along with his friend Dizzy Gillespie on trumpet, was a man named Charlie Parker. Uh, originally from Kansas City, just uh, right down the highway from St. Louis where I grew up, uh, Charlie really... Uh, played fast. He played happy. He, he, uh, he, he wrote this, these songs, a lot of them over chord changes that were already for other songs. But he and Dizzy Gillespie, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in a jazz club, went to hear these two play. This is a little thing called Scrapple from the Apple. <laughs> fun to play. A lot of instrumentalists play this song. It's even fun to sing. How fun is that? Lots of fun stuff for Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie and they just rule the scene in New York. Um, the Village Vanguard, The Bottom Line, in incredible places to see these guys. Um, so, you know, jazz had kind of shrunk down a little bit in size uh, and also changed uh, the way that people were listening to jazz. It used to be you'd go out and put your dancing clothes on and do your, your rumbas and your foxtrots and your lindy hops to the big bands. And now you were, jazz was courting more of a listening audience, a little bit more uh, of an educated listening audience. Uh, and so I think it, it, the listening audience changed a little bit for jazz, but uh, it was all good. Um, you know, things can't stay the same all the time. Uh, so we also had around that time a fabulous songwriter by the name of Harold Arlen. 
uh, and he and Ted Kaler wrote this next song, originally in 1932 for Cab Calloway, but uh, who had the hit on it? Frank Sinatra in 1953 with the Nelson Riddle Orchestra. Uh, Nelson Riddle was around for a long, long time. Uh, but this song was also cut by uh, Ella Fitzgerald, uh, Lena Horne. Uh, a lot of people have done this song, and it's, it's just a great song. It's one of my favorites. I've got the world on a string I'm sitting on a rainbow I've got the string wrapped around my finger What a world, what a life I'm in love I've got a song that I sing I can make the rain go Anytime I move my finger Lucky me, can't you see I'm in love Life is a beautiful thing as long as I hold that string I'd be a silly so and so If I should ever let go I've got the world on a string I'm sitting on a rainbow I've got the string wrapped around my finger What a world, what a life Look at me, I'm someone's wife <laughs> What a world, what a life I'm in love Isn't that a great, great tune? Love that song. Uh, so we are um, moving into the 1950s. That song was actually in 1953. We're, we're flying along here, you guys. Uh, 1953 also, uh, well, actually, the early 50s, this song was composed uh, by uh, Gus Kahn and um, Andre and Schwant. This song was cut a million times by so many people. Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, Nat King Cole, Sarah Vaughan. Oh my God, Sarah Vaughan, what a beautiful singer. Doris Day. And even in 1968, Mama Cass Elliot did a great recording of this tune. And man, is it, it's just something. Her recording was incredible. I'm gonna do it on baritone ukulele. Stars shining bright above you Night breezes seem to whisper I love you Birds singing in a sycamore tree Dream a little dream of me Stay nighty night and kiss me Just hold me tight and tell me you'll miss me while I'm alone and blue as can be, dream a little dream of me. Stars fading, but I linger on, dear, still craving your kiss. I'm longing to linger till dawn, dear, just saying this. Sweet dreams till sunbeams find you Sweet dreams that leave your worries behind you But in your dreams, whatever they be Dream a little dream of me Dream a little dream of me Beautiful, beautiful song. Uh, so we are in the 50s. We have arrived in the 50s. Uh, and so, you know, the American standards uh, are still a huge part of the, of the jazz scene. But also, you've got a lot of instrumentals going on at this time. Uh, and one guy that really needs mentioning is a, was an incredible piano player by the name of Dave Brubeck, who uh, wrote this song. Actually, uh, his, his saxophone player wrote this song, Paul Desmond. Uh, in 1960, no, it's 1955. We're still in the 50s. And in doing my research for tonight, I couldn't believe this, but it's the truth. This is, let me, let me get it straight here, the biggest selling jazz single ever. 
Whoa. Yay, Sue, we're away for the 50s. I see you. Yeah, me too. I barely got in the end of 50s there, but I, but I made it. <laughs> all right, so uh, this is little take five. And here it's the biggest selling jazz single of all time, and it's not even in a meter that we really recognize. It's in 5-4 time. But it is sure cool. Oh, I forgot this song has words. How about that? Oh, Michael August, you and I are the same age. How about that? Won't you stop and take the little time out with me? Just take five. Stop your busy day and take the time out to see I'm alive. And though I'm going out of my way just so I can pass by each day, not a single word do we say. It's a pantomime and out of place. Still, I know all lies out for me. I feel tingles down to my feet. When your smile gets too much to screech, sends me on my way. Wouldn't it be better not to be so polite? You could offer a light. Start a little conversation now, it's all right. Just take five, just take five. Just take five, just take five. What a cool, cool different, different uh, kind of music than our big band stuff, right? But uh, nonetheless, very, very cool. Take five. Uh, and then, okay, so my friends, we are leaving the 50s. Psh, moving on, moving on in our time machine. Uh, we are in the very early 60s, and uh, a guy that grew up in the bebop tradition, trumpet player, actually grew up across the river from me, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. He grew up across the, the Mississippi in Alton, Illinois. And boy, did he set the jazz world on its ear together with his friend and saxophone player, John Coltrane. I'm talking about Miles Davis, of course. Uh, Miles wrote tunes, but he also put a signature stamp on whatever he played. He had a very, very signature sound to his trumpet playing. Um, and always put together great, great bands. Uh, one of his bands, I think on Someday My Prince Will Come, that's the song I'm gonna do, is Wynton Kelly on piano, Paul Chambers on bass, Jimmy Cobb on drums, classic, classic uh, New York jazz guys. So, uh, and he always, he always just put a great twist on these standards. So this is, I mean, this song is from Snow White, for heaven's sake. Hang on, I gotta chase my piano pedal. It, it likes to travel. All right. Someday my prince will come. song and beautiful arrangements really really breathe some different life uh, into um, into into some of these songs mr. Miles Davis um, so then um, I have to tell you something I have to share something with you this is not common knowledge but in the 60s we were invaded did you know that <laughs> we were invaded hey Cheryl how are you Okay, yes, this is the 60s, there was a lot going on. And we had Vietnam, we had, uh, we had, you know, 
a lot of people talking about peace. Uh, we, had, we had a lot going on. The, the 60s were a turbulent time, but we also had an invasion. And it was from Brazil. The Brazilians invaded us with their music. Uh, and it's a good thing they did because their music is just beautiful. Uh, this was one of the first songs to, uh, I think, that Americans were aware of because it was written by Louis Bonfa and uh, Antonio Maria uh, for a film, Arfeo Negro or Black Orpheus. Uh, and uh, I'm going to try to do the Portuguese here because it's just so beautiful. But you really need to listen to the original, um, which is incredible. <laughs> Manhã da bonita manhã Na vida uma nova canção Cantando solta solos Te riso tuas mãos Pois a vida gira em que virá As cordas de meu violão Que sola tu amor perderou Vim uma voz Fala de beijos perdidos Nos lábios te Brazilian invasion, I'm telling you. So glad they, they showed up <laughs> with their music. Uh, so here's another one uh, by a very, very well-known composer. He and his entire family um, are very, very famous for their beautiful music, uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim. Uh, and this is normally performed as uh, The Girl from Ipanema, which celebrated, the song celebrated its 50th year anniversary, I believe a couple years ago. And the girl from Ipanema is still around and is still beautiful, the inspiration for this song. But being new to the ukulele, I've only played it for a few years, uh, I decided to do my own twist. So this is Girls with Ukuleles. <laughs> Like an ocean breeze 
blues Girls with ukuleles So, I can say I wrote a song with Antonio, Antonio Carlos Jobim <laughs> Oh well, not, not really But anyway, it was, it was fun so, uh, the Brazilian invasion uh, is here to stay, and together with a lot of the world who by now had heard all of our jazz and was, was, was influencing us, and, and in the 70s, uh, by the time the 60s and 70s were starting and, and through the 80s into the present, the world started their own jazz clubs and their own jazz festivals. You had jazz festivals in Tokyo and in Montreux, Switzerland, and in Amsterdam and everywhere. And uh, you got, you had big bands starting in Tokyo. Uh, there was a lady named uh, Toshiko Akiyoshi who had a respected big band for a long, long time. Elian, uh, Elias uh, in Brazil has her own band and recordings. Uh, just an incredible tradition. Um, carried on. So this song is my only song from uh, the 70s era and uh, actually it's it's my second to last song just in case you were wondering um, because I figure you know the 80s and 90s and and here we are you know you can go and listen to some of these people so uh, but this person uh, just passed away and he's one of my favorite composers. We just lost him in February. Great pianist and composer uh, by the name of Chick Corea. Uh, and he really, um, you know, he grew up in the bebop tradition as well. I think he played with Miles Davis. I was one of his keyboard players for a uh, time. But he really took, uh, put his own stamp on music. His compositions are ethereal. Uh, fun, funky, technically difficult. Uh, I'm going to try to play a little bit of this uh, song, which is one of my very favorites of his. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it correctly or not, but we're going to try. This is called Spain. <laughs> just an instrumental song in the 80s Al Jarreau sang this song oh my god I can remember the rain in December the leaves are brown on the ground in Spain I did love and adore you the bright lights were thunderous all yesterdays and the nights were the heat of yearning ah oh, you've got to check out Al Jarreau it was, it was just incredible uh, so so Chick Corea really um, added to the jazz scene so so much and uh, like I say we just lost him a couple months ago and it's uh, he's a great guy great educator as well gave back uh, a lot so uh, these days just to kind of wrap up things a little bit um, we have instrumentalists we have arrangers we have incredible uh, musicians uh, there was a resurgence, you know, in the 80s with, uh, with Linda Ronstadt suddenly hiring Nelson Riddle, remember him back from Frank Sinatra in the 50s? Nelson Riddle's orchestra and, and did her uh, whole album of the American Songbook with things like I've Got a Crush on You, 
uh, and you know what's new uh, really brought together a lot of people made them aware of the great American songbook and, and about all the jazz tunes uh, followed by Natalie Cole and Rod Stewart and Manhattan Transfer and Barbara Streisand got her hand in there too uh, and uh, you know Al Jarreau, like I mentioned uh, and then now later, where we are now, we've got the Diana Crawls of the world and Diane, Diane Reeves and Diane Schur. Harry Connick Jr. has his own big band. Yay, Harry! Uh, you've got the Marcellus Brothers, uh, saxophone and trumpet. You've got, uh, you know, all these great people. Nora Jones is, is doing, doing some great stuff. Uh, I have a friend in Paris. Her name is Leslie Lewis. She's a jazz singer. Reminds me of Sarah Vaughan. Check her out, Leslie Lewis. She's amazing. I used to play with her in Los Angeles and she's like far beyond me these days. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, Leslie, wow. So anyway, uh, I had to jump in and, uh, and write a song of my own. I've been writing a lot of jazz things. And uh, so this, I'm gonna close with this song. Once again, I have to thank the, the Memphis Public Library and the Memphis Library Foundation for presenting all these live programs and supporting us independent musicians. Uh, there's nothing like that support. We appreciate it so much. Um, you've got, once again, your next week performer is going to be a special treat, Mr. Michael August, multi-instrumentalist and singer uh, extraordinaire. He's also a great educator as well. Uh, you're, you'll learn some things. Uh, he makes it look easy. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that, that's going to be a treat. Uh, and, and Sue Schnitzer, you are a jewel. Thank you so much for asking me. This has just been so fun. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. So I'm going to close with this song. Um, all of these things. Hey, we've made it for the 100 years. Wow, in our time machine. That's pretty cool, huh? Um, all of these things. I was thinking about them one time, and I was playing piano at the time. I was in my piano bar. I played it for years at the Lowe's Vanderbilt Plaza here in Nashville. And I started singing some of these standards and I started thinking to myself, boy, there were a lot of people that came before me. Wow. I mean, we are standing on the shoulders of all these giants, right? All these people. Hey, Nancy, how are you? Uh, <clears throat> all these people came before us and I, and I just got chills. And so I wrote a song called Somebody's Been Here Before Me because I just started thinking about these people. Well, I turned it into a love song, but the, it, was, it was the inspiration for this song. And um, it just, um, it's so true. We have to appreciate them. We have to play their music. And uh, hey, Elizabeth, Mark, thank you so much. You guys pre appreciate your company very, very much. I hope you enjoyed it, and I, I sure did. So uh, this is an original song. I guess I just wanted you too much So much I was blind to what was right there between us The closer I got, the more you'd close the door Now that I've forced my way in this far I can't say I hadn't been warned Somebody's been here before me It's all broken in pieces And scattered round It's too crowded a place here for me Not a trace of a welcome to be found I can feel look there how much you still care I was all set to rush in write your heart story but somebody's been here somebody's been here somebody's been here before me thank you so so very much 
I'm going to sign off now. You guys have been so sweet to come and watch me. Appreciate it. Thanks again to the Memphis Library and Sue Schnitzer. Lisa Webb, sign off. Keep swinging. Keep listening to jazz. See ya.